Hi friends, welcome to BAMU's Biogenius. Today we will discuss about the rebate popper hypothesis. This topic is included in NCRT biology book uh, for 12th point number 15.1.3. So stay connected with me for this lecture. Now, uh, first of all, we will discuss about the history of a rebid popper hypothesis. This hypothesis is uh, developed by Paul Ralph Ehrlich and his wife Anne Ehrlich of Stanford University in 1981. Now, what do you mean by hypothesis? Hypothesis means a kind of a crude explanation uh, for a particular kind of a problem. So that is called as a hypothesis. Now, according to this hypothesis, uh, species richness and the ecosystem stability, they are interrelated, they are dependent upon each other. If uh, species richness declines, the stability of ecosystem declines. We know that what is a species richness. Species richness means number of species that occurs in a particular kind of a um, ecosystem that is called as a species richness. What do you mean by stability of ecosystem? See, the stability of ecosystem includes the, or we can say that when a particular kind of ecosystem is able to maintain its structure and function, then it is called as a uh, stable ecosystem. Now, what do you mean by structure of ecosystem? Structure of ecosystem includes physical and geological structures that are present in that ecosystem then number and diversity of species that is present in that ecosystem and uh, different or uh, we can say that the population sizes that are present in that ecosystem interaction among that particular populations that includes or that is that comes under the structure of ecosystem and what do you mean by function of ecosystem function of ecosystem includes various kinds of processes that occurs in an ecosystem uh, here for example water and nutrient recycling is a process that occurs in a ecosystem that also defines the function of an ecosystem then uh, biomass productivity uh, all these are the processes that are included in the function of ecosystem so when a particular kind of ecosystem is stable when it maintains or it has the ability to maintain the structure and function then it is called as a stable ecosystem now here are some examples of uh, stability of ecosystem you can see here the productivity in 2020 in this particular ecosystem was ample in 2021 the productivity fall down and in in uh, 2022, again, the productivity of this ecosystem is restored. Now, you can see here, there is a much variation in a productivity per year in this particular ecosystem. So, such kind of uh, variations are not uh, um, expected from a stable ecosystem. So, if a stable ecosystem is there, there should be a constant kind of a productivity per year uh, in, in that particular ecosystem. Another peculiar feature of uh, the stable ecosystem is that it can absorb occasional disturbances which may be natural or man-made. So you can see here, even if there is a forest fire or a flood or a drought, that ecosystem should not uh, show any kind of a, a disturbance or a destabilization then we can say that it is a, a stable ecosystem then another peculiar feature of a stable ecosystem is that it is resistant to invasion by alien species we know that different kinds of alien species invade ecosystem for example uh, this um, uh, grasshoppers or that may be a plant lantana camera all these are the alien species and even if these alien species invade that particular uh, ecosystem that ecosystem if 
it is uh, resistant to such kind of invasion then such a kind of ecosystem is called as a stable ecosystem now if an invasive species like a lantana camera is present in an ecosystem it will compete for the sunlight it will compete for space it will compete for nutrients that are present in the soil but even if such a kind of a uh, invasive species is present in the ecosystem if that ecosystem sustains or if that ecosystem does not get disturbed by these alien species then such type of ecosystem is called as a stable ecosystem now you can see here that for a stable ecosystem species diversity or a species richness is very important but when in an ecosystem we cannot see the changes that are happening we cannot study the changes so for that purpose we have to make a outdoor arrangements we have to make outdoor plots and on that plots we have to uh, study the effect of species diversity and uh, re its uh, relation with the ecosystem stability such type of experiments were done by david tilman and he concluded that if more number of species are there the community or that community is more stable you can see here this is the plot and number of uh, or different colored trees that represent number of different number of species so more species in an ecosystem there will be a very less variation in a biomass or more or less that biomass will be will remain constant if more number of species are present in an ecosystem another conclusion of uh, david tilman's research was that if uh, more number of species are present in an ecosystem that ecosystem is more productive now as we equate ecosystem stability with the species richness one question comes in our mind is that what will happen to the stability of ecosystem if uh, some of the species got extinct consider that this is an ecosystem with a 14 number of species and one of the species got extinct what will happen to the ecosystem as we know that ecosystems are very large spread over acres of thousands of acres of land and it contains different types of species of plants and animals we cannot pinpoint the effect of loss of one species to the ecosystem so scientists different scientists have came up with a different explanations one of them was paul arlich and he came up with a crude explanation as i have told you that hypothesis means a crude explanation and this crude explanation is that known as or this hypothesis is known as the rivet popper hypothesis where we equated species in an ecosystem with a rivet in an aeroplane so this is known as a aeroplane analogy or a rivet popper hypothesis see in this analogy he equated aeroplane with a ecosystem and species with the uh, rivets of that aeroplane as these rivets are very important to join different parts of the plane and the stability of that plane is dependent upon these rivets if these rivets are popped out or removed the stability of that aeroplane will uh, be hampered will be affected and this aeroplane will not be able to fly and it will go down similarly in an ecosystem species are like a rivets so if species are removed gradually that ecosystem will collapse so this is known as a uh, rivet popper hypothesis that is given by paul arlich in this particular 
Rivet popper hypothesis, each and every species is very important in an ecosystem. Some of the scientists are of the opinion that, like Walker in 1992, he said that some of the species are more important than the other species. And he used the same analogy for that. For example, if rivet from a particular kind of a chair that is present inside the plane, if that rivet is removed, from that particular chair, it will not affect the plane as a whole. The stability of that plane will remain unaffected. But if a rivet from an engine is removed, the engine will collapse and so the plane will also go down. So some of the species in an ecosystem, they are also or they are very important as compared to others. And he named it as a driver species or a key species and other species are considered as a passenger species. Why the name key species is given? That is because we know that in a particular arch, this keystone is important because all the other stones that are dependent upon this keystone and if this keystone is removed, these particular stones which are forming that arch they will collapse and this is how that so the whole arch will collapse so this keystone is very important similarly in an ecosystem some species are key species or keystone species that are very important than the other species for example in case of uh, uh, elephant we know that elephants are very important animals in an ecosystem and they are considered as a key species that is because several reasons are there such a type of uh, species that in an ecosystem are very helpful in maintaining the biodiversity of an ecosystem. The first effect of these key species or uh, elephants is that they make uh, very long passages through the dense forest we know that they have a particular kind of a corridor or they um, daily they move from one place to another place and during that movement it has been said that about a daily movement of elephant herd is about 25 kilometers and during this particular journey they change the ecosystem for example whatever the seeds they eat that are dispersed uh, in the whole forest. Then uh, another important effect of uh, elephants is that uh, they make uh, passages through these dense forests so that or because of that this particular passage is also used by other animals also. Then another point is that during the dry season they dug up the holes on the ground in search of water and they drink the, the water from that holes. Now these holes are also used by other animals during the uh, dry season. Then the footprints when filled with the water, they create a kind of a micro environment for a different types of organisms like a tadpole. So this is how these animals are responsible for maintaining the biodiversity of an ecosystem. So such animals are called as a keystone species or key species. Now studying this particular video, we now know the importance of each and every species. We know the importance of ecosystem, stability of ecosystem and number of species that are present in an ecosystem. We might not know the importance of each and every species but now we know that each species is very important or collectively each species has a particular kind of a function in an ecosystem and these functions are very important for well-being of an ecosystem so by studying this particular video now roughly we can understand all these questions the mean, real meaning of all these questions
that is does it really matter to us if a few species become extinct would western ghats ecosystem be less functional if one of its tree frog species is lost forever or how is our quality of life affected if say instead of 20000 we have only 15000 species of ants on earth so thank you very much for patient hearing please subscribe to my youtube channel bamul biogenius for latest uploads or please like my videos and comment thank you